What's up, y'all? It's your boy Cash Rap Million Dollar Bird. Yeah, hey. Tune in with your. I hope everybody is enjoying a weekend. We about to go off into the deep end. I want everybody to check in with me right now. It's about to really go down. Dog, y'all, I got some exclusive fire blood for y'all. Y'all not gonna wanna miss out on this one. I'm telling you. If you've never tuned into my live before and you just now tuning in, you're welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You ain't gonna be mad about it at all. Your boy is about to go in, and I'm back with some more exclusive five testimony for you. Some more exclusive five testimony for you. I'm about to tell you how God's blessings has been dropping, and how He will keep you. Even when you in your weary states of mind, God will keep you if you just focus on him. You got to remember that God is a jealous God. He don't like you put nothing before him because he is the creator and the destroyer of everything. God's blessings is dropping. If you've been feeling God's blessings dropping, I'm going to need you to tune in right now, like, share, and comment. I appreciate everybody who been like, sharing, and comment. Your boy is back. And y'all know I'm about to go in. And I love everybody, even my haters. Even my haters. It ain't nothing you can do about it. It's for real. God's best is dropping. Y'all tune in. Hey. Cause God's blessings dropping, God's blessings dropping, God's blessings dropping. Yeah, He dropping on me, dropping on you too. Hey, <laughs> what's up with y'all, man? I'm feeling good. Man, we into the second month of the new year. As long as you keep your focus on God, you're gonna be okay. For the new year of 2022, I'm going to tell you, don't depend on nobody but God. If somebody asks you something, you say, but God. They want to know something, you say, but God. Yeah. This your boy, Cash Rap, million dollar version. Oh. Y'all better be living your best life and using the gifts that God gave you for his glory. You better be using the gifts that God gave you to represent his glory. If you're not using the gifts that God gave you to represent his glory, then I'm sorry for you. Because they're going to be giving away. You're gonna see, you're God going to skip right past you. Matthew 13. You know what I'm saying? The farmer that went forth to, to sow a seed. Everything you do, you sowing a seed. Understand that everything you do, you are sowing a seed. But just know that God's blessings are dropping on you. Y'all, man. Uh, like, share, and comment already. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe to my YouTube channel at Cash Rap Management. You already know what time it is. You already know what time it is, man. They ain't gonna like this, but we coming with it anyway. We coming with it anyway. Did you hear the metaphor? We coming with it anyway. Because when you got the most high God behind you, ain't nothing you can't do. Y'all, I got some testimony for y'all tonight. 
I agree with life. I have some big testimony for you tonight. Let me clear my path before I dive in to the deep end. Sure, y'all remember that song. You know what I'm saying? By uh, blocking copyright purposes. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. I want my life to be authentic. You know what I'm saying? I want my life to be authentic. You know what I'm saying? You can block the live all you want, but my life's gonna be authentic at the end of the day, baby. You know what I'm saying? We ain't worried about no copyright infringements because everything was here before you was even ever thought of. That's what God said. So y'all, oh my goodness. You gotta learn to enjoy yourself regardless of whatever is going on around you. You have to learn to love yourself and focus on you and God in order to go to the next level. I'm telling y'all. It ain't gonna be easy out here, but it's damn sure gonna be worth it. I'm here to tell you it's gonna be worth it. If you stay steadfast and believe in the most high God. <sighs> y'all know I got some real let's talk to y'all about tonight. I'm going to give you that inspiration and motivation that you need. And it's all for the glory of God. It's not me. If you tuned in right now, like, share, and comment. This is your boy, Cash Rap, Million Dollar Version. We in the building. What's up, y'all? What's up? You know what I'm saying? If you represent for God and all you is about is God and God gonna do it for you, let me know. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to confess God. Are you gonna represent for God or what? You gonna give a nod? What? Ain't nobody bigger than God out here in these streets. I'm talking about some streets. He on the whole world and everything that's in it. I'm the president, I'm this in it. Come on. Beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega. Come on, man. We're gonna worship God. We're gonna worship God for eternity. Are y'all ready to worship God for eternity? Are you ready to submit all the days of your life? Will you give your life for the Lord Jesus Christ, his son, that died on the cross for our salvation? Or are you gonna submit to the devil out here? That's going to take you straight to the pits of hell. Ain't no more deciding what side of the fence you're going to be on. It's time today that you make a decision. So what decision is you going to make? <laughs> this your boy, Cash Rap, Million Dollar Version. I'm going to need everybody that's tuned in right now to like, share, and comment. We about to go in for the Lord. We about to go in for the Lord. Is y'all ready to go in for the Lord or not? If not, then go ahead and log on. Lock me. Tune off this channel. Facts. I want y'all to know tonight that Jesus, Jesus loves you as you are. Now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. First Peter chapter one, verse 22. See, tonight I want to talk to y'all about destroy fear with courage. I want to tell you about how to destroy fear 
with 20 seconds of courage. See, nowadays, courage is overrated, at least overestimated. You don't have to, I would say, live courageously in these latter days. In fact, you can be a coward 99% of the time, to be exact. You only need to muster up 20 seconds of insane courage at a time. Now follow me along now before you start second guessing. See, those 20 seconds, right? Those 20 seconds when you pick up the phone to call that big cop, that big kahuna, that prospect. You see your dream client into the network you need. You walk up to a circle of strangers and introduce yourself as cash wrap million dollar version. Right. You volunteer to come up on stage. You contemplate jumping into the icy cold water. See, you are arguing with your spouse and choose to relent. You are slighted and decide to let it go and forgive. You know you need a tough conversation with a friend. I know there's some people out there feeling lonely tonight, but don't feel lonely. God got you. You know it's time to let someone go. Let them go. You need to say no, even though it will make you unpopular. Because sometimes today, if you say no, it's going to make you unpopular because everybody is a yes man. But not me. You ready yourself to jump out of the plane. You want to go bungee jumping, bungee jumping or whatever. In life, don't go budget jumping. Follow God. Each one of those defining moments is what I want to tell you. Only requires 20 seconds of real courage at the most. Once the 20 seconds are over, it's easy, breezy from there. See, tonight I want to tell you about courage. Courage is not simply one of the virtues, but the forms, every virtue at the testing point. I'll turn this down a little bit. I'm about to get in there with y'all. See, I want to talk to y'all about how to overcome fear and muster up 20 seconds of courage. You got 20 seconds of courage on you because God coming back in the twinkle of an eye. Fear is not real. It's just chemicals that's going on inside your body. Sure, it feels real. The pounding heart, knocking knees, and sweating palms. Those are real enough symptoms for you to be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious for nothing. But the thing we're actually afraid of is an illusion, an invention inside our minds. Ultimately though, a spider can't make you scared. A prospecting call, scam likely, can't make you scared at all. The only thing that can make you scared is how your mind interprets those things that you're going through in life. See, fear is a phenomenon that resides entirely within your own brain. It's the mind that gives every interpretation meaning. It's the mind that conjures the negative emotions.
These are just the thoughts of a predicate man. For real. I want to let anybody know out there that as long as you are in prayer and working for God, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And it's going to be a great day. You got to believe that. Come on, man. Everything that you do ain't nothing gonna matter except for those things for Christ. Period. Point blank. God do it for God. If you're not doing it for God, then everything that you are doing means nothing. It means nothing. Because fear itself doesn't actually exist. It only exists in our mind. It's an illusion. And once reality takes over, I'm telling y'all that the illusion dissipates. The illusion dissipates. How fear works and how to choose insane courage instead I'm going to talk to y'all tonight about how to choose insane courage in these latter days. Because, see, fear mostly comes in anticipation of experiences, not in experiences itself. Let's take jumping out of a plane as an example, right? Oh, the room got quiet. <laughs> I need everybody to like, share, and comment right now on this lot. See, novice jumpers were fitted with a heart rate monitors, right? That measured their pulses as their plane climbed upward toward its release point. Follow me now, right? So when you're going up on a plane, and you ready to jump, you will find that jumper's heart rays are a heart level that you could never imagine. But once they were out of the plane and jumped, their heart rates declined dramatically. The most stressful part of the entire experience was the illusion or anticipation of the event itself. Once the reality of the event, free falling, took over, the fear vanished. You got free will out here. Free falling once you jump out of the plane. You got free falling once you jump out the plane of life. In other words, what I'm telling y'all tonight, I want to talk to y'all about the definition of courage. Knowing you will experience fear in the future, but doing it anyway. You're going to experience fear in the future, but still you're going to have to do it anyway. I want to meet y'all, man. I want to see y'all walk across the room. I want to know those with 20 seconds will require the same courage. And then the fear will dramatically decrease. Be anxious for nothing. So what do you do when you hit the wall of fear in life? How many everybody like, share, and comment? This is your boy Cash Rap, make it out of virgin. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at Cash Rap Minute. This is what you do, right? Use your brain, you close your eyes, you nod and you breathe if you need to. And you do whatever your body insists you. Run right at it. Your dreams and goals in life. You will break through the wall of fear, I promise you, in less than 20 seconds. You can break through the wall of fear in less than 20 seconds. It's just required decision. What if you did something 
you fear three times a day, every day. Do something that you fear three times a day, every day. That's a prescription to success. I want you to imagine how doing so would multiply your success, how it will multiply your lifestyle and prominence in the marketplace. Think of the breakthrough you could create. You could still be a coward 99% of the time. A really rich and successful coward. Do the math. 20 seconds of courage times three times a day equals 60 seconds. 60 seconds planned by 86,400 seconds in a day equals 99%. What would you accomplish with your insane courage this week of Valentine's Day? Want more courage? More inspiration is going to be required. If you haven't signed up yet for my mentoring service, you need to sign up. It's your boy Cash Rap Million Dollar Virgin. Email me, inbox me. I'm here. Sign up for a mentoring session. I got something for you, and I'm going to take you to the next level. I promise you. you sign up for my mentoring session right now, inbox me at management. Cash Rap at gmail.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at Cash Rap Management. See, your career has extended beyond just fighting by staring in major Hollywood movies. See, right now, it may seem that you're scoring huge endorsement deals. But you ain't in, in, endorse nothing until you endorse God. I, I need everybody to give up their sins right now and confess to God and endorse God. Early this year, see, I was looking, they inducted the first female fighter in the UFC, Fall of Fame. She was like 31 years old or something. Her career is a testament to the amount of work she's put in over the years despite the odds. Y'all know about the, the female, um, she, she be the one in. I want y'all to use these Rhonda Rosen quotes to keep pushing through fear and love the process of becoming successful. You got to start learning to love the process of becoming successful. Because, see, most people focus on the wrong thing. They focus on the result, not the process. Enjoy the process. Because, see, the process is the sacrifice. It's all the hard parts, the sweat, the pain, the tears, the losses. You make the sacrifices anyway. You learn to enjoy them anyway, or at least embrace them in the end. It is the sacrifices that must be fulfilled inside you. See, sometimes it's hard to focus on the process when you crave the results so bad. But as your boy and your life coach, Cash Rap Million Dollar Version, bringing you to the cross, trust the process. Don't rush the process is what I want to tell you. Only God can make it happen. Only God can make it happen. All praises due to the most high God. You got to enjoy your failures. You got to enjoy your setbacks and learning moments on the way to achieve your biggest goals in life. You can do anything once you power and say, realize that it's just a process. Fail faster so you can learn faster and start achieving your biggest goals. 
I know that may seem unorthodox, but fail faster so you can hurry up and learn quick. There have always been people who have written me off in my life, y'all. They ain't going anywhere. I use that to motivate. I'm driven to show them just how wrong they are. You gotta be just as driven to show them who you truly are. Haters will fuel your fire, your drive, and your ambition. Don't let the naysayers tell you what's possible. They are only expressing their own failures, their own insecurities, and lack of belief outwardly in life. See, God see through all the filters. We got a lot of filters and people don't really know who we are, but this right here is a naked message. When you feel like quitting in life, remember that if you do you, you'll be exact. That person, they said you would be. You'll do exact. Don't quit. Do not quit in life. Find a new way to reach your biggest goals and prove them wrong. Because you can do all things that Christ, through Christ Jesus with strength is. I want to be a perfect fighter in life. And that's one of those unattainable goals because you would never be perfect. But I can always be closer to perfect as long as I stay praying and on the side of God because he's the only one that's perfect. Perfect doesn't exist in sports. I know it's a Super Bowl going on right now. Business or life at all. Be perfect means you are constantly trying to improve and get better to align up with the will of God. This is a huge key, y'all. Tune in with me right now. You don't want to miss this one. To make progress in life. But you're going to make progress in this life with God. Man ain't going to say, do not push your Put your trust in me. God is constant and never ending. God is constant and never ending, always improving. While perfect is unattainable in almost everything in life, you can still be always improving as a parent, a friend, a partner, and a person. For real, for real. No drug or amount of money or favoritism can ever give you belief in yourself. Only following the Lord can. See, self-belief is something, how I say it. <clears throat> See, self-belief is something that you have built up and acquired on your own. Trusting yourself, your own intuition to make your dreams happen will create more belief than anything else in the world. But I'm here to tell you that your thoughts and your plans is not of God's. God know we already got planned for us. And to be the best, you have to constantly be challenging yourself, raising the bar, pushing the limits of what you can do. Don't stand still. Leap forward like a frog. Always keep pushing. I want y'all tonight out there to keep growing and keep learning. You'll never feel like you made it feel because God will humble us. The moment you feel the best you are, when you are learning and becoming the ultimate version of yourself, the moment you feel the worst is when you're stuck and not making progress. I want y'all to remember that progress equals happiness in all areas of life. As long as you're making progress, you're doing something every day to, to, to make some type of progress. There is nothing in my life that I would go back and change at all. 
even in the darkest moments, I wouldn't go back and change it. All the successes and, and, and greatest joys in my life are, is, are a result of the absolute worst things. Every missed opportunity is a blessing in disguise. I'm going to take three days to contemplate on that. See, I don't want y'all to run from your past. I want you to embrace it. Even the darkest moments of your past, I want you to embrace it. The moments have achievement, learning moments in them if you are self-aware enough to find them. While it may not be immediately after a failure or setback, you can always find good in any situation. Find good in any situation. I don't care what you're going through. You got to find good in every situation and in any situation. Tonight, I want y'all to continue to keep working hard, persevere, and become the greatest version of yourself. You were meant to become. God wants you to become the greatest version of yourself, which you were meant to become. What are you holding back for? Stop it. Let's go. And as you make moves to become a better version of yourself in the year, in the new year of 2022, y'all, unquestionably, you will attract haters. You're going to get some hate from people you know, some people you love, and hate from people you've never even met before. And you ask me why? Because as you embark on the next phase of your story in life, into the new year, and set new goals, for the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to want to progress to another level and everybody else gonna wanna lie on behind, you gotta leave behind. You're going to start that business, hit that goal you've been in, eyeing off all year and make some big life changes. I'm here to tell y'all now, I'm gonna need everybody to like, share, comment, it's your boy Cash Rap, me and Dr. Virgin. We going there tonight. And see, when that happens, your bond to get judgment from others, haters, if you will. And that's part of the process of changing, y'all. That's what I want to tell y'all. That's part of the process of changing and evolving into the ultimate version of yourself. You feel me? But it would not stop you. Use them as fuel to fire up and become the person you were meant to become in 2022. Use these haters as fuel for your fire. I don't want you to worry about haters though. They're just angry because the truth I speak contradicts the lie they live. I rather argue or I argue this is my favorite line because it's only going to get better at this point on. If you're haters, if you're haters, right, don't like you, that's a good thing. But maybe you could convert even your haters to come to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. See, you got to learn how that negativity is usually just a contradiction of the success you're creating. I'm sure once you notice, you'll realize that the people who are the loudest in the room are often living the biggest lie. They're living with filters. Ain't no filter on this lie. So you got to learn to use criticism as fuel and you will never run out of energy. See, it's easy to get down when people start hating on your dreams. 
In fact, the mind wants to help you though. See, you, you got to remember it's a survival machine out here. So when it feels pain from negativity and critics, it wants to help you avoid that pain in the future. See, some of y'all may be going through things right now. You're like, why am I going through this? Because you got a lot of responsibility to much is given, much is required. But see, those trials and tribulations, the pain you're going through, like you can't let them hold you back. You have to use that as fuel to keep going. You got to get really quiet in your life so you don't even hear the noise. If you're doing what you love and going towards your dreams and following the Lord, God, that's all that matters. I guarantee it will be worth it if you can submit and give your life to God right now today. See, hate is too great a burden to bear. It injures the hater more than it injures the hated. See, oftentimes, when you're making changes and people don't like it, it's because they see you becoming the person they wish they can be. They become angry that you were brave enough to stare back defiantly in the face of fear. While they cower in the shadows, spewing hatred to any bum willing to listen. I'm just being real with y'all. I don't need everybody to like, share, comment right now. See, they don't have the self-discipline or the willpower or perseverance to make it happen. So instead of helping you, they try to bring you down to their level. I know y'all. I'm, I done been through it. I'm going through it. I feel y'all out there. What y'all going through, your trials and tribulations, it resonates in my spirit with y'all. No matter how good you are sometimes, someone is always going to be against you. But never let them be the limit of your success. Tonight, I want y'all to give up on trying to please everyone in the world. Even the best of the best in the world still have critics and online trolls. I want y'all to focus on y'all vision and give it 100% effort daily. Don't let them drag you down. Break free and burst into life. Burst into a life of Christ. God got you. God's blessings is dropping. If y'all in the building right now, I need y'all to like, share, and comment on him a lot for real. Because see, people who hate you because of mere jealousy and over your success hurt themselves in disguise. See, this is because you carry an image of who they wish they had become. Don't hate them back though, dog. No. Because they may also become like you one day. And it will be hurting that image you carry. Let's face it. If you're getting hate, it's easy to want to project it back into the world. In fact, it's easier than not doing it. But you can't let your emotions control you all the days of your life. Because if you do, you're no better than them. Simply 
stay focused and keep a positive mindset no matter what to attract more good into your life. If you feel excessive anger or doubt, that just means you have more work to do on your But feed your mind with success daily. Feed your mind with The best way to uh, uh, counter spiritual attacks is blank. Obvious. The devil attacks has no impact on the chosen ones of God's life. The next time someone goes out of their way to hate on you, Wish them success. Laugh about it. Or do something different. To show them. It doesn't affect you. At all. I promise. They'll be so confused. They won't know what to do. But remember. Remember that you will face your greatest opposition when you are closest to your biggest miracle. I promise your moments and your moment is closer than you realize. God's blessings are dropping, y'all. Block out the noise in life and keep going until you become the person you were meant to become. That's the best route to go. Today, I was reading in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14 through 15. It says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the hall, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Philippians 3.21 Who should change, who shall change our thou body, that it may be fashioned like unto this glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. We talking about the Lord, y'all. I want you to think before you speak. Be slow to speak and quick to listen. Start taking advantage of your regrets. I need everybody to start, comment right now, start taking advantage of your re regrets because they taught you something through life. And God already knew your life before it even started. One of the most challenging aspects of avoiding failure, pain, and regret in life is that it's, it's not until you experience, you actually learn how to avoid them. See, we don't know the stove is hot until we touch it, right? And we don't know what losing a championship feels like until the final point is scored. The actions that led to these results are ultimately where we went wrong. But in the moment, beforehand, we have trouble recognizing the signs. Sure. Sure, we listen to a nagging parent who tells us to keep our hands away from hot things. 
and we can hear the words of other people who have experienced similar events. But truly, understand something. We need to actually experience it ourselves. That's the truth. We tell people you want them to learn before you, but they got to learn themselves. They got to be prepared for the pain. Prepare for the pain and act accordingly. Prepare for the pain and act accordingly. Pain can come in a number of various forms, y'all. Pain can come in a various forms. It can be the physical pain of injury. Or it can be the emotional pain of loss. But in both instances, we are often left with one common emotion. Regret. We can't help but think, what if I just, or if only I had done, do it now. Give the people their flowers and their roses while they alive. Not for them. We're dead. Because deep down we know these statements can't do anything to fix the situation. But I believe they serve a greater purpose. <laughs> the common problem for many people is that these moments of pain and regret, right? They tell them all the things they wish they would have done differently. And they toil over and over of all the ways they will never let this happen again. See, it's an entirely tense moment. But often we have our greatest revelations in these trying times. As we go through 2022, get ready for AI. AI is coming. See, unfortunately, a month or two later, a lot of these ideas and plans fall flat. We forget about how we felt in the moments after defeat. We cannot recall the true depths of our pain. If you've ever spent an evening binging on fast food and sweets, you probably know the feeling that came afterwards, right? You feel like, I would have said, you're going to throw up your mouth is raw from all the sugar and salt. And you feel like you just gained 20 pounds in two hours. But as you go to sleep that night, you vow to never do that again. We done came to God like that. I swear on God, he could do this no more. And he still give us chance after chance because God is a merciful God. Thank you, God, for being a merciful God. Then a month later, you and yourself going out for a late, late night snack. A night of fast food, you run, and you buy six burgers with a side of apple pie and strawberry sundae. You indulge in the things of life. Y'all, we all done indulge in some things of life. And then 30 minutes later, regret it. Y'all like to share it. See, our brains simply are wired to remember everything about an experience. Very often, the moment that sticks with us is the peak moment, the highest point of enjoyment. See, your, 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 your brain hardly remembers the sugar crash. It only, remember, it, it only remembers those initial bites full of bliss. And the further you get away from that experience, the less likely it is for you to be able to recall the pain you experience.
whether it's a sugar crash or a painful loss, we are very quick to forget the painful lessons we experience through life. We let them slip past us, and in the end, we are the doomed to repeat our past mistakes. Don't repeat your past mistakes. There's three versions of you. There are always three versions of ourselves. Number one, the past self. Number two, the present self. Number three, the future self. Cash wrap, million dollar version. These versions of ourselves can sometimes seem like different people. We often feel like the decisions made by the past versions of ourselves were immature and naive. And we choose to let the future versions of ourselves deal with the problems when we choose to procrastinate. But however, I digress. Since neither the past nor the future versions of ourselves ever actually exist in time. In real time though, the only person that suffers is the present version. Your past and future, you don't know what that, all you know is about right now. Focus on the right now. Quit worry about the past and don't worry about the future. But still stay with me. God is saying still stay with me. Stay with God. See, what I'm trying to say to y'all tonight, simply y'all, for real, for real, we lack empathy for ourselves. See, sometimes we forget, forgetting what it feels like to be in the shoes of our past self, failing, failing to remember how painful it was to lose that big match or miss the game winning shot. And in the end, we don't learn the lesson. How can we combat this though? First off, <clears throat> it's difficult to relive an emotion, especially if we're never taking the time to live with it in the first place. But with one simple practice, it's possible to properly address this issue. I'm gonna switch the beat up, y'all. See, the next time you experience a painful moment in your life, record how you were feeling afterwards. Why don't you record the regrets you had, the wishes you were making, and the promises you made to yourself. I want you to remember that person. I want you to ask yourself the following questions tonight. What are you truly feeling right now in 2022, in the second month in February? What are you truly feeling? Why are you disturbed by this feeling? And how could you have handled the situation better? What will you do to never let this happen again? See, once you've done that, once you pull out your phone and polite, tell Siri or Google, whoever, to set a reminder one month from now. Remind me of who I am truly inside. Let your alarm clock go off for who you are inside. A month later, when that reminder chimes in, I want you to go back and review 
or what you wrote down. Reflect and figure out if you are still on track. If you aren't, refer to the answer you gave. To your your question a month ago, what would you do to never let this happen again? Come on, man. I'm going to digress, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to wrap it up into my final thoughts. Seeing a world with so many varying opinions, values, beliefs, and lifestyles in life. Many of us are quick to judge the actions of others. Quick to judge the actions of others. But, we, but before we can do that, though, we need to be able to properly judge ourselves. We have to take time to listen to our inner dialogue and understand where it's coming from. I'm about to get into it. Let's go. See, our brains are wired to avoid things that cause us pain. But we about to dive into it. We instinctively, we instinctively want to protect ourselves, right? We should do a better job of helping this voice be heard on a regular basis. Because by implanting or implementing a practice like the one I just mentioned above, we give ourselves a fighting chance and we allow that inner voice to be heard more clearly. In this present moment, listen to the best version of yourself so that the future version of yourself can live the life you really want to live without no regrets. It's time to start living your life and living life without no regrets. But in conclusion, y'all, I will leave you with the unbothered soul. See, what I learned is that the only permanent solution to your problems is to go inside and find God, the Holy Spirit, and let go of the part of you that seems to have so many problems with reality. God is in control of everything. Once you do that, you'll be clear enough to deal with what's left. I'm telling y'all, God's blessings are dropping. This your boy, Cash Rap Million Dollar Version. I'm gonna need everybody to get tuned in right now. We about to dive into the topic. You got to start developing mindfulness in a mindless world. Develop mindfulness in a mindless world. See, mindfulness is the ability to turn down the white noise, the, the white noise in our life and focus on what is happening in the moment. In this state, we are able to notice and pay attention to what is happening to us. See, <clears throat> when you develop the state of mindfulness, when you develop the state of mindfulness, it wakes you up. And then you're able to see the richness of your experiences. The opposite of mindfulness is mindlessness. In this state, we walk around and see a world that is gray. We miss a lot. And what we do, see, we don't pay any attention to. We take the little and the big things in our life for granted. It's like we've clocked in, but we're not really there. Mindfulness. Mindfulness then is the ability to concentrate, pay attention to your situation, and be fully in the moment. And 
through the process of, and through the process of mindfulness, right? You'll be able to slow down your conscious thoughts. And by doing this, slowing down the mind, you will be able to awaken the spirit within. It will remind you, the Holy Ghost will remind you that there is more to life than the challenges with which you are daily confronted. Are daily confronted with. I want to talk to you all about, see, mindfulness. Mindfulness moments, they occur at any time in life. They are designed to allow you to strip away the layers and discover that lies beneath. I want you to ask yourself tonight, immediately, who am I? Simply ask yourself the following question. Who am I? I'm going to everybody to like, share, and comment right now. Who am I? Do you know who you are? I want you to ask yourself that question. Then I want you to really listen to your response inside, in the inner. It's likely a label like a teacher that you put on yourself. I want you to respond with not that I want you to repeat this process over and over and over again until you have produced a long list of labels. These labels will more than likely describe your position in society, your personality, or your talents. See, I learned that you got to keep uncovering layers and layers on top of layers until you arrive at the question. Who is asking the question? The inner self man, the inner self woman. Your answer to this question will allow you to cut through the list of illusionary labels that the society in this world has put on you with which we pigeonhole ourselves to. We are able to become more insightful about who we really are. If we look within and we go to God and we confess our sins and ask for forgiveness and ask Lord, who am I? Because only God knows who your true self is, not these filters. The lit flame or the lit life sit comfortably in a darkened room. Place a lit candle directly in front of you. Go ahead right now. That was the white candle. Now close your eyes and focus on your breathing for two minutes. I want you to count your breaths. One, as you breathe in and two, as you breathe out. Continue until you reach 10 breaths in and out. Then I want you to return one and continue this process. This your boy Cash Rap Million Dollar Version. We in the building right now. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. But after two minutes, I want you to open your eyes and focus on the flame of the candle. Gaze gently at it without staring or straining. Study the flame, becoming fully aware of its beauty. Notice things about the flame that you have previously taken for granted. Because God that made you hot right now. I want you to become one with the flame. The Holy Spirit. Next, absorb the flame. The Holy Spirit in your body. Do this by fully establishing an awareness of it. Inside of you. Feel its heat warming inside of you. Feel the flame moving around you. Around your body. Provide heat energy to your various parts. Along with that warmth, realize that it makes 
you feel safe, contented, and relaxed. If God's blessings has been dropped on y'all, I'm going to hear everybody like, share, and comment this video. I should have already been, did that. Now, I, I just want y'all to close your eyes. I want you to refocus on breathing, right? Be anxious for nothing, but count breaths as you breathe in and two as you breathe out. As we move on into the future in 2022, y'all, I want y'all to continue until you reach 10 breaths in and out. Now we turn to one and continue this process. I want you to focus on the flower that you're going to receive. I want you to sit comfortably in a darkened room. Place a single flower in a bowl of water directly in front of you. I'm going to talk about now close your eyes and focus on breathing for two minutes. Y'all remember the process? You got to count your breaths. One as you breathe in and two as you breathe out. And you got to continue the process. I'm going to need 10 breaths up out of you. I'm going to need 10 breaths up out of you. If you feel like giving up right now, I'm going to need you to give me 10 more breaths before you decide to quit. Do not quit. I'm going to need you to focus on the flowers right now that you are receiving from the Most High God. I'm going to need you to study the flower. I'm going to need you to become fully aware of the flower's beauty. And you are the flower. Focus on your beauty. Look in the mirror. Notice things about the flower or yourself that you have previously previously taken for granted. Become one with yourself. Become one with that flower inside of you, which is the Holy Spirit, letting you consciously melt inside. I know that y'all are consciously melting inside. Melt it into your own torso and feel it moving toward your heart. Do you feel it? Enjoy its pulsing softness and beauty. That's the Holy Spirit moving through your body. The Holy Ghost. Accept God now. What are you waiting for? But close your eyes and refocus on your breathing and know who gives you your breath. Man can't give you your breath. Only God does. I vow to roll with God into the end. I do not put my trust in man. I put my trust in God. Statements you said, the work out of it. I'm talking about if it resonates with you, it's going to help you inside your mind. It's going to help you in ways that you ain't never been helped before. Because I know I've been through it, and I resonate with y'all. I feel y'all. You, you got to go to a place of quietness, peace, and comfort. When you are in a place of quietness, peace, and comfort, then you can hear from God. You got to use mindfulness in moments. And you got to expand your mind and your consciousness for God only. I want to give tips, a water tip to the mindfulness of God for looking over my life. Same time every day. I'm gonna need everybody to tune in right now. I need you to select the environment and what side you're gonna be on quickly. But whichever side you choose to be on, I want you to sit comfortably in an erect position. And I want you to develop awareness of your breath and your life and the choices that you can make it in your life. If you find that your life and your mind begins to wander, just gently refocus on your target. Don't get annoyed with yourself. It's part of the training process, as they like to say. Focus. God is saying focus, focus, Focus right now. Focus today. And when you 
walk into that arena of life, there is no holding back. There is only 110% effort. There is maximum commitment that I'm gonna need everybody right now to do. I'm gonna need your maximum commitment for you to like, share, and comment on this video tonight. There is no holding back. Do you hear me? This your boy Cash Rap Million Dollar Version. Man, I hope this video is resonating out there with somebody tonight. Because I know that you don't get nowhere or anywhere holding back. Do not hold back tonight. Champions do not hold back. If you are a champion, champions don't hold back. What you holding back for? Don't let God give somebody else show talents because you ain't using them. Beasts don't hold back. Ain't you savage out there? The great never hold back. You are strong, focused, always ready. God is the omnipresent. He is the beginning and the end. Stay calm, prepared. Keep your hands steady. Don't let him shake. You are a beast. You are a champion. You are ready for fame. You are a beast, a lion. No one will tame you. You can do all things through Christ Jesus, which gives us the strength. Go all out for God. Give 110 for the Most High God and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in life, death, and resurrection. God for our sins. Are you focused? I'm focused. I'm focused. Did you hear me? I am focused. I am a machine. I am a beast. I see challenge. And then I feast. Let's go. It's your boy Cash Rap Million Dollar Version, man. I'm the everybody to tune in right now. Like, share, and comment. Let's go, man. I hope this video is resonating with somebody. I know I'm kind of going there right now, y'all. But I'm going to need y'all to bear with me. I got some things to talk about tonight. And I really think that if you're tuning in right now, something will touch your soul. Because you are unstoppable. No one has the power to stop you. As long as you are rolling with God. No one has the strength to haunt you. As long as you are in love with God, your desire and heart will destroy anyone that gets in your way. God will make your enemies your footstool. And when you roll with God and you're a soldier of God, you're going to get the job done. Don't look around. No, no, no. Don't look around to see if others are watching. No, 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 no. Don't seek recognition, Pharisees. Don't seek approval, Pharisees. You don't need it. You will be better without it. Tell the people the truth. You don't listen to the haters. They hate because they are small, y'all. Understand that. See, you got to understand that you are far from small. You are large and in charge when you're rolling with God. God is bold and confident. God is large. So that means you are large because he gave you the Holy Spirit with inside of you. God is in charge. I am not in charge. I submit to God all day long. No matter how many disappointments along the way, I submit to God. I submit to the most holy God, Lord. You own everything my whole life. My mind remains stronger, though, than ever, because I believe in the most high God. And it's Son Jesus Christ every minute, every hour, every day. I focus to the finish. Stay steadfast and to the end. I learned that the love that you have for others is the work, the pride, the pride in the work, the toughest of the work. 
the enormous satisfaction you get when you look at yourself in the mirror and you know you know without a shadow of a doubt you are okay when you give your life to God. See, your place has been earned already when you give your life to God. You know you got a place in heaven if you die physically. Your place is deserved. There's no better feeling than knowing that you got salvation with God once you believe in the Lord our God Jesus Christ. You know you ain't self-made, but you are strong in knowing that God made you and he's powerful and he's prepared you. So I'm going to need y'all to focus. I'm going to need you to be hungry for more of the Holy Spirit. Repeat after me right now. This is my time. I have a vision. And no one will get in my way. No one will alter my beliefs. No one will roadblock my goals. I will move aside all barriers to my dreams. I will rip them to shreds and leave them scattered on the ground. That's how bad I want this. That's how bad I want God. I want him to fill my life in, my goals. He's going to make everything happen for me. I want it more than anything or anyone. There is no plan B when it comes to God. There is no falling back when it comes to believing in our Lord, God. There is only one option. Succeed at all costs. Carry your cross. Reach the top. Reach the goal. Remain focused. Your eyes are on the prize. I hope of God. Your eyes are on the prize. I hope of his son, Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that as you go through this life, pain is only temporary. Greatness, if you maintain into the end, is forever. So are you going to live this day as if it is your last? Are you going to live this day as if it is your last shot to make something of yourself? Give your all. Show your heart. Show your drive. Push yourself to absolute limits. Yeah. I believe you will succeed. You will succeed, yes. Give it to me, God. You will succeed. You will Live life to express and not to impress. But see, God will help you overcome, though. He will help you overcome. God will help you overcome many of the things <clears throat> that you may go through. God is one that you can depend on. God is one that you can put your confidence into and don't have to worry about him ever failing. God knows that we're all just a smattering of random ingredients. And he has to grab hold of each part 
and work them all together for his glory, throwing and weeding out all the yucky stuff that's inside our life. See, he's been working. He's been working me together for years about a thing in my life. I've been struggling with y'all. A lesson. He's showing me and a lesson that he wanted to teach me. What I thought don't matter. The mattering part is what he's teaching me though. This one thing, how it applies to every single one of us in every single day, in every single circumstance, in every single season that we may go through in our life. Be ready for the lesson that God is about to teach you tonight. God about to teach you a lesson. And see, when God teaches you a lesson, when God tells you to do something, and you have no idea how it could possibly happen, just do it anyway. Just do it anyway. See, sometimes these lessons can saturate us. They can stop us from doing what we need to really do in life. See, I've realized that being soaked, being soaked through with new knowledge brings me to the fullest blessings that God has prepared my life for. See, whether you're selling a home or adopting a child or starting a business or moving across the earth, Asking for healing from God or a financial miracle or restoration of broken relationships from God, whatever it is, he will do. According to his will. And we only want that anyway, ain't that right? Like y'all, y'all like sharing comment, man. Hello, man. See, our most abounding blessings are found in our obedience to God Himself. Did y'all hear me? I'm going to say that again. See, I've never meant, I meant anything more in my life, y'all. See, I don't want to say this. Our blessings are nestled inside of our obedience. That's where they are tucked away at. That's where they abide. We have to obtain or we have to abide in obedience to lay our hands on them. It seems that, right, it seems that, it seems that the place that God likes to show out the most in our lives, right, (laughs) it's the place he's been mostly showing you. See, while you may have a long laundry list of prayers that seem unanswered. Let's flip that perspective on its head and ask God this. What prayer has God been holding an answer for that you haven't prayed? What prayer has been pointing you too and showering you with no matter where you look that you just keep looking the other way though it reminds me of the nation of Israel in the Bible being called out of Egypt right that's what it reminds me of they were being called out of Egypt into the promised land God saying, come from out of Egypt and come into the promised land. You don't want to go to the promised land? Y'all tripping. I'm going to the promised land. Being in Exodus, I'm in Exodus 4. See, Moses was 
has to go to Pharaoh again and again with the request to let his people go. God had already hardened Pharaoh's heart. Exodus 5, 1. Again and again, though, he was met with big, fat, solid, no answers from Pharaoh. How you going to deal with rejection in life? All of those no's brought even more pain just from the question being asked. Pharaoh lashed out each time and extended new levels of punishment just because the Israelites had asked for their freedom. He extended new levels of pain just because they asked for new levels of freedom. Sometimes the answers are harder to bear, y'all, than bearing the weight of an unasked question. Sometimes we'd rather rest in the comfort of an uncomfortable present than risk an even more uncomfortable, unknown future. See, there was so much hardness in Pharaoh's heart. And the people thought Moses was bonkers. <laughs> Just stop asking Moses, they said. It's only getting worse by you keep asking God. No, you keep asking God. The plagues, the terror, the uncertainty that's going on in this world, it seemed that asking Pharaoh kept bringing tremendous burden upon burden rather than the freedom and blessing they were asking God for, that they had risked everything for. They was telling Moses to stop asking because every time he asked, and Pharaoh said, no, things got worse. See, the the persistent no of Pharaoh, the no answers had to have been crushing. The punishment for asking. You ever been punished for asking a question? Come on now. But God. When I ask you something, say, but God. But God. God had a prayer for the people of Israel that they were too frightened and too weak and too lost to even ask for themselves. They had to send Moses. They were scared of the process. They were scared of the roadblocks. The stretching and pain that came through all of the no answers that would precede the yes. You only allow people to tell you no before they say yes, y'all. So they never even ventured to ask Pharaoh for their own freedom at all. They were too afraid of the cost of the accident. Don't be afraid to, woo. Don't be afraid to ask. Uncertainty. So just like the Israelites, you are content to live in ca captivity, but you can be set free by believing in the Lord our God and Son Jesus Christ. But Moses persisted, obeying God in his request is being willing to ask the unfemptable, the unfemptable. Risk the rejection and pain of obedience alone. Ultimately, all of the Pharaoh's nose was culminated into an abundant yes in God. I know I'm going there with y'all tonight, y'all. Follow me. And for us today, see, we always, always have a yes in Christ. In 2 Corinthians 1.20. So when God calls you to do something or to something, and you're thinking, nope, there's no way. I can't do that. It won't happen. Things would never change for he or her. It's just impossible. I don't see a way, even for God. When your mind starts to think like that, 
I want you to remember this. I want you to remember this one thing, Michelle. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. First Thessalonians 5.24. And oh, I give my word. When God says do it and you do it, it is beyond comprehension. It is overwhelming. It is astounding. God is a show out. He has prayers for you, for all of us, that he's directing you to. Ask him to help you see. Then ask him for the courage to help you obey. He will move mountains for you on your behalf. And if you need a nudge with getting your prayer life organized and on track, Tune in to your boy right now and share this live video. This your boy Cash Rap Million Dollar Version. I'm gonna need everybody to like, share, and comment. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel at CashRapManagement.com. I'm gonna wrap it up for y'all though. See, Jesus loves you as you are, is what I want you to understand first. And now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth of God, so that you have sincere love for your brother, love one another deeply, as the words say, from the heart. You know what I'm saying? In First Peter's one, verse twenty-two, when you start doing that, you destroy fear. You destroy fear with the courage of God. Don't be afraid. Don't let courage be overrated. Stay focused on God and do what you need to do. Don't worry about nobody else. All you need to do is stay focused on God. Because as soon as you lose focus on God, it's over. It's so good. I'm going to need everybody to stay focused on the most high God. And stay pressing forward to the high call. It's your boy Cash Rap Million Dollar Version. I just wanted to come in here tonight, you know what I'm saying? And tune in with y'all, man. I know this right here was a little loopy one, but. This is something that I had to get out. I hope 